what's up you guys my name is Jackie and welcome to my channel Leisure Reads. So I've been missing on booktube for about two three weeks now and I'm really sorry for that. Hopefully life has returned to a pace where I can still manage to film videos and keep up with my daily life. A couple weeks ago I was on my way to work when a deer decided to run straight into the side of my car. It didn't do too much damage on the outside, it just left a small dent, I could still open the door. The problem was that it hit the sensor perfectly for the airbags and deployed the side airbags on the vehicle, which ended up totaling the car. So I ended up having to do all of this shopping and searching for a new vehicle with my husband. We finally found a vehicle, I thought everything was good to go, and then I had a family member pass away. So I've just trying to so I've just been trying to process and handle that and I haven't really felt well enough to get on camera and talk to you guys and tell you about the books I've read or anything. I've just been trying to take care of myself. So I decided I would get on here today and tell you guys the books I read in the month of October and give you guys a little glimpse of what they were and what I thought of them. So in the month of October I managed to read five novels, read two comic books, and I DNF'd my first book since joining BookTube. The first book I read in October was Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is a psychological thriller that follows the main character Quincy Carpenter, who 10 years ago while still in college decided to go on vacation with five of her closest friends. This vacation took a horrible turn and became the night when Quincy Carpenter became a final girl, the night when all of her friends were brutally murdered and she somehow made it out alive. Now, 10 years later, Quincy has moved on with her life. She has a baking blog that she runs, a caring almost fiance, and the support of Coop, the cop who found her all of those years ago in the woods. When the first final girl, Lisa, ends up dead, and the second final girl arrives on Quincy's doorstep, Quincy finds herself behaving recklessly, evading the police and reporters, all while trying to figure out what happened to Lisa and what happened to her friends all those years ago in Pine Cottage. Riley Sager is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. I recently read The Last Time I Lied and I absolutely loved this book and I loved this book just as much. I gave this book four out of five stars and read most of this book in one single setting. I really loved the way this book weaves between the past and the present to slowly reveal what happened all those years ago at Pine Cottage. I am able to understand and appreciate the reveal more and actually enjoy it. Like I said, I really enjoyed this book and I look forward to seeing more of what Riley Sager comes out with soon. This next book is a book that I think every single person should read. It is a super sh short book, it took me maybe five minutes to read it. It is illustrated throughout and it is so small that the pages are not even numbered. And that is Sea Prayer by Khaled Hosseini. This book is a man's message to his son as they are fleeing Syria as refugees and it is amazing. I'm about to share a very unpopular opinion on a well-loved book within booktube, so <laughs> that is your warning. This book is everything Exit West was not. Frankly, I don't even know what I gave Exit West and I don't care enough to look it up, but I absolutely hated that book. While I understand the sentiment and what the author was trying to do with the book, I believe that very powerful statements in that book were completely ruined by unnecessary metaphors that went on for pages. I say all this to say that this book is the exact opposite. Khaled Hosseini wrote this book so that the words have power. The language in this book is beautiful and when it is paired with the images throughout this book there is no way anybody can deny the power that these pages hold. This book moved me to tears and I think every single person should pick it up and read it. There is an important message in this book that is dying to be heard. Plus all of the author proceeds from the sale of this book go directly to the UNHCR the UN Refugee Agency, and the Khaled Hosseini Foundation. All of this will help fund life-saving relief efforts for refugees all around the globe. Please, go pick this book up. If, if you rent it from the library, buy it from the store, it does not matter how you get your hands on this book, please go read it. The next book I read was part of my Spookathon TBR, which I am proud to say that I successfully completed all of the challenges. And that book is The Haunting of Hill House. So this book actually completed two challenges for me, and those challenges are 
read a book with purple on the cover, and read a book that is set in a different time period. I ended up giving this book two out of five stars. Unfortunately, this book did just not do the trick for me. I think part of the problem was that I listened to the audiobook instead of reading it, and and this audiobook I just really had a hard time with. I had a hard time distinguishing the characters from each other as they all kind of sounded the same with one voice actor. I had a very difficult time placing these characters in ages. Um, they would talk about very mature topics, but other things they would do and say were very childish, so I had a really hard time processing it in my mind. And I think I went into this book with too high of expectations. I kept hearing how great of a story it was. It was one of the greatest horror stories of all time. And I think I really built it up in my head to something that it was not um, when I read it. I really understand why people love it and appreciate it so much. For me, it just didn't do the trick. Um, I did really enjoy the tense scenes in this book. They did leave me on the edge of my seat, and Shirley Jackson really knows how to write a tense scene. Unfortunately, the rest of it just didn't do much for me. The second book for Spookathon I read also completed two more challenges for me, and those challenges were read a thriller and read a book with a spooky word in the title, and that book was Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. This book follows a new girl, Casey, who moves to Broken Fall, Wisconsin to live with her stepmom and father. Broken Falls is very different from her old home as everybody is very welcoming and nice. She immediately becomes best friends with two girls and she is a little upset when she finds out that they went to the party of the year without her only to find out that one of them never made it home. This is your classic missing person thriller and I did enjoy it. I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five stars. Young adult thrillers don't typically do much for me. Um, I typically go into them and find that I feel something is missing from the book or the plot just feels a little lackluster to me. This was a nice change of pace. I did really enjoy this book. I did not see the end coming. I think it was a fun book to read with a very fun plot twist at the end. This is the only book by Kara Thomas I have ever read and I did really enjoy it, um, but I do not know how it stacks up to some of her other books. The last two things I read for my Spookathon TBR helped me complete the challenge, read a book with pictures in it, and those were The Walking Dead Volume 1, Days Gone By, and Volume 2, Miles Behind Us. These are the comics that inspired the AMC TV series The Walking Dead, and I initially watched the show to then go back and read some of these comics. I am really enjoying the comics as a whole, and I'm really enjoying seeing how the TV show differs from the books. There are characters that are in the show that aren't in the comics and vice versa. I'm really enjoying it and seeing how they stack up. I have also played the Telltale Walking Dead video game and so it is nice to see how the game has pulled off of these comics a little more than it pulls off the TV show. I think if you enjoy The Walking Dead you will really enjoy these comics so if you are interested you should go pick them up and read them. They are very well written and the graphics are very well done. The next book I read this month was called What Remains of Her by Eric Rickstad. This was the first book of his that I have ever read. I did really enjoy it. I listened to the audiobook version that I had rented from Hoopla. It was a very fun read that was quick paced and I gave it three stars. This book follows a man named Jonah who comes home one day to find that his wife and daughter are missing. 25 years later on the anniversary of their disappearance. Another little girl in the same area goes missing. This little girl shows up on Jonah's property, dirty and hungry, bringing up all of the memories Jonah holds for his daughter and what might have happened to her. This was a very fun read. It wasn't very unique, and I did guess the ending from the very beginning of the book. It was enjoyable. It just wasn't very unique. It was pretty stereotypical um, missing person thriller. But it was fun, and I would recommend it to people who enjoy mystery thriller books or are looking to get into the genre. This brings us to our final book of October, which is the book that I DNF'd. And unfortunately, that was Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. I have heard this book hyped on booktube for months now. Um, tons of booktubers were talking about it constantly, and it sounded really interesting. 
So if you don't know, it is about three girls, Mia, Bryn, and Summer, who are very into this book called The Way Into Love Lorne, and they actually write fan fiction for it. One day, Summer ends up dead, murdered exactly how the fan fiction that they were writing described. This obviously casts suspicions onto Mia and Bryn, the two surviving friends, and they become the suspects of an investigation. Eventually, they are let off the hook as there's not enough evidence to convict them of any wrongdoing. This book picks up a couple years later when Mia and Bryn start finding evidence that they are not the ones who committed this crime and trying to figure out once and for all what happened to Summer and get the suspicion away from them. I made it like 150 pages into this book before, before I finally just gave up on it. Um, I had been struggling with it from the very beginning. I made it to about 50 pages and told myself, well, I'll give it 50 more. If I don't like it by the first 100 pages, I'll stop reading. So I kept reading. I made it to page 100 and I still did not want to finish this book, but I was having a struggle with the whole thing because I wanted to finish it and see it through to the end to figure out what had happened to these girls. But ultimately, I just did not care enough to keep going with this book, and there were other books that I thought I would be more interested in reading, so I finally just gave up and decided to DNF it. Ultimately, I just could not get into this book. It is a book told with dual perspectives from both Mia and Bryn. Personally, I didn't th think these characters were well defined. I was constantly having to go back and look at the chapter heading to figure out who was talking. I could not tell if it was Mia or Bryn. While they have different circumstances between them that are very interesting on their own, their personalities and their characters did not seem developed enough for me to, to distinguish them from each other. I think this book had too much going on. It was trying to tell you the story of the way into love lorn while also telling you the fan fiction they wrote while also telling you um what's going on in Bryn and Mia's life now as well as telling the story of what happened uh the night summer died i think this book was just a little overly ambitious and it just didn't work out for me and i didn't really have the drive to keep going to read this plot twist which is weird because i love plot twists and Normally, I will keep reading until the very end. I don't often DNF a book, but guys, I was just struggling. I decided I was going to make it to page 100, and then when I hit that, I decided I'd keep going just so I could read it and say that I read it and be done with it, but it took me a week to get through like 20 more pages, and I just couldn't do it. I had to give up, I had to give up on it and move on to something that I actually thought I would enjoy reading. So if you guys have finished this book, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys thought of it. I'd be really interested to hear if you guys enjoyed this book, if you just kind of had so-so feelings on it, or if you too DNF'd it. If you guys are interested in hearing more about any of the books that I have mentioned, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. I will do individual reviews on the books if that is something you guys would like to see from me. Overall, October was a difficult month. I had a lot of stuff going on, but I did manage to read a decent amount. Um, hopefully I would like to read more in November. That is not going so well currently, but maybe it'll turn around. I guess we'll see. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, Goodreads, and Twitter. The links are in the description below. I hope to see you guys again soon, and in the meantime, make it a great day. Bye!